this is Joe Jasper uh, coming from Joe Jasper video and I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on a quicker method of chroma key uh, also known as green screen I'm using Photoshop Pro which is Corel's trademark uh, and a digital photo processor so go ahead and make sure that you have Corel Paint Shop Pro open when you do this. Uh, open up both your background picture and your portrait. Here I have a portrait with a person as requested by one of my viewers instead of using a cartoon to please use a person. So here we go. I'm going to put this in lecture format however for you so that uh, we can all see what's going on. Make sure you uh, set your settings to high definition resolution so you can read my screens and see what's going on. Chroma key or green screen. Uh, in this case we want the subject to be as lacking as possible of the key background color that you're substituting. Otherwise you're going to have some problems. So illuminate your subject well from behind or from above in the sides so that uh, you get as little color bleed from the background as possible. Have the solid key color uh, background behind the subject and evenly illuminated. In this example we're going to be using a green screen. Go ahead and take the photo and then of course open uh, the f portrait in PaintShop Pro. Also open your second image with the desired substitute background, whatever it is, a cityscape, a beach. Make sure the layers dialog palette is also available. If it's not, then go to view, palettes, and layer. So I have my layers palette over here. Uh, and if you don't have yours, go to view, palettes, and layers and make sure that that's visible. So mine is so I don't have to worry about that. And what we're going to do next is duplicate the portrait. So while viewing in the portrait uh, you're going to go to the layers palette box, hover over it, right click on our background layer and say duplicate. Let's do that now. Come over to my layers thing, palette, right click, duplicate. Now you see two. The next thing we're going to do is copy the background. So I'm going to click over that, show you in the lecture. Copy the background, open the desired background, resize it a bit oversize compared to the portrait. The pixels per inch should be the same as the portrait, then adjust the dimensions to be wider and taller. Edit and copy it. So if you want to know how to do that, go to Image, Resize, and you can see this is a little small, so I'm going to ask it to be bigger in my portrait. It's going up 130 percent. I'm going to say OK. You saw it jump. Now edit, copy, and then we need to paste it into our original portrait. So open the portrait again and in the layers palette block box left click on the bottom or background layer and then edit paste as a new layer. So let's do that. There we are. By clicking back to the portrait, going to the layers, I click on the bottom layer, and now whatever I paste will be above this layer, not above that layer, but not to worry. Edit, paste as new layer. And then as you can see, if we go back to the layers dialog box, our new layer background is going to be sandwiched in between. If for some reason 
you goofed and you have it up above the other layer, just left click and drag it in between. Okay, now let's work on the magic part of substituting. What we want to do basically is, sub is subtract all this green and just leave the gray background behind it. So, we're going to be using uh, the layers palette again. Make sure we're clicked on the top portrait layer. So here, right now we're clicked, we're highlighting the, the background. We want to left click here. And then we're going to go to selections, select all. Every single pixel in this photograph is currently selected, but we only want the green. We're going to go to selections, modify, select color range. And I get pretty close to the hair, sort of towards the middle of the top to bottom range here. Left click and that color should appear here. The tolerance is currently set to 65. I find that works pretty well as long as you don't have something close to green anywhere in the portrait and that the softness is at zero because I want to get in between every little hair if possible. I also have subtract color range so now, really the green is not selected, but all this is selected. And we don't want that. We want to select Invert. Now all the green is selected. Then if we press Delete on our keyboard, voila, the new background has been substituted. So let me bring up the lecture part again. What we did was we left clicked the top portrait layer, went to the select all, then in the selections menu modify select color range, set the tolerance to 65, the option to subtract, the softness to zero. Move the cursor over the green screen near the hair and left click. In selections, again, click invert. On your keyboard, hit delete. At this point, you're pretty much done and you could merge and save. However, if you want to make any changes to your background or to the foreground, the portrait, to make the merge look better, do it before merging. Then in the layers palette, right click and merge if you want to just merge them all you can go ahead and do it and then save your masterpiece to a TIF or JPEG whatever your choice is. So to demonstrate changes that we can make at this point if we say oh you know that background is just not what we want we can select none for, for now uh, we can come back to this background layer, left click on it, and say something like adjust and come to brightness and contrast and perhaps darken the background. And I think that looks better with a darker background, a little less contrast to match about the same level. That makes it look like a better portrait. I still see this green fringe here. So one other thing I might want to do is come up and get rid of the green in the hair by coming over to the multi-tool selector and come down to the multi multiple brush selector here. Select saturation brush. Left click would increase saturation. Right click would decrease it. And what we want to do is have a brush size that puts a enough of a circle that we can only only need the edge 
especially of a very soft brush. So if your hardness is up, turn it all the way down to zero. The steps all the way down to one. And the opacity, whatever works for your particular thing, I'm going to use 40 here. And you can see the inner circle here is my actual brush. I'm using the edge of it. Let's zoom in on this portrait. And I'm just using the edge of it and right clicking and using it to desaturate the edge of the hair. Now it's not getting rid of every bit of green. If I want to, I can push in a little more or I could increase the opacity. But I don't want to really change the color of the majority of the hair. I just want to get rid of some of this green. Might make my brush smaller. And if it's not opaque enough, I can take the opacity up. And that's looking better already. And that helps get rid of that aberration of color around the edge. Then when I'm satisfied, I can merge. I can just merge down and that allows me to see the before and the after. Or I can right click and merge all flatten and then save the portrait, file, save as, and then wherever you want to save it.